Welcome back everybody to Forza Horizon 5 and um, we're dealing with another seasonal championship so uh, yeah uh, it's left, left Fiesta so uh, we're going to be in A class Fords so yeah it is a one mate championship but they have a reasonable amount of variety in that class so I'm not too fussed and yeah we're getting there in this fantastic Ferrari uh, I know it's been in plenty of Forza games before but I am truly appreciating it a lot more in this game than I have beforehand. So, uh, yeah. Let's get there and find style. We're particularly quick. Especially in comparison to the cars I'm going to be driving, that's for sure. Yeah, nearly there. Uh, looking forward to the SF90, which will, uh, yards, turn sharp left. will be able to get a hold on come tomorrow. We'll finally be able to get the last few points. Let's get, that, let's get that vehicle. Can use 80 points in the series overall. Right, let's see where we're going to be racing and what we're going to be racing in. So we're going to be in the city for one, and the country for another, and obviously this freeway one. So yeah, we've got a brace of different kind of Mustangs. We've got the RTR, the standard GT, the Shelby GT500. Then we've got the old and the new uh, four GTs. Then we've got a Falcon, a few off-road vehicles, and obviously the Ford Focus RS. No Fiestas because obviously they're not, you know, powerful enough to be in A class. Uh, but yeah, still a nice variety. I think we're gonna go for something a little bit safe to stop. We're gonna go with the RTR Spec 5 Mustang. Purely because it's got a decent amount of power, 460 horsepower, 420 pounds feet of torque. It's got really rather well good handling and braking, as you can see, compared to the standard Mustang. It is far better. It's a little bit heavier, probably because of all the extra bodywork that it's got going on, but still, it's a really rather well fun car to drive and a, yeah, a really good uh, modified Mustang in its in what is now a stock form on this game. Because yes, it's modified outside of the game, but I've not modified it in the game, so it's technically stock. But yeah, what a machine this is. High revving V8. Which I'm actually a fan of. I, uh, I do obviously like my low rumbling V8s of old, but I just really rather enjoy these high revving uh, V8s that Ford have been pumping out a lot lately. Surprising just how quick this is considering how heavy it is. I expect something that's not far off 4,000 pounds with only 460 horsepower to be all that quick, but it really does make the most of its power. Good drift car as well, if you're into that kind of thing. Although obviously, drifting is not the fastest way around the course or around the circuit. Fastest uphill, unfortunately. Well, it should more than make up for it on this straight, which yeah, is a bit more downhill. Kind of 
that break myself there. how much that uh, Bronco off roader rolls around. Some serious lean on that, but regardless, we got first place. Not by a country mile by any means, but a win is a win. Giving us the only important 20 points. And a good start to this championship. So yeah, I think a standard Mustang GT came in second, yes, and then the Bronco in third. A older Mustang, I think the Shelby GT500 that might well be in fourth, then the Ford GT from 2005 in fifth. So uh, yeah, good start to this uh, championship. So let's move on to the second race. Right, so now we're going to be racing out of the city. So I am in the mood for the standard Ford GT40. To be honest, it's got really good handling, uh, decent braking, uh, good top speed. Uh, but a decent amount of power, only f uh, 390 horsepower from only something that weighs 2,222 pounds, which is about 1,600 pounds less than the Mustang that we're in, despite only having 70 horsepower less. So, uh, yeah, I know we could go for the uh, newer one, but it's a bit more cumbersome. I know it's got technically got better handling, but it's a larger, heavier car, and I'm quite frankly up for something a little bit more nimble, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, let's see what this can do. I don't think I've raced this on this game yet, so. Uh, yeah, should hopefully be an interesting car to race. Obviously, initially this was not a uh, successful racing car. Got absolutely thrashed by Ferrari on its first going at Le Mans. So, hopefully we can do a bit better here. Extremely long gears to make the most of the power at the top end. That's where it gets a lot of its top speed from, is those long gears. Ridiculous how low down this car is though, only 14 inches tall. Pretty sure we can fit under the wing mirrors of that fit and focus there. I'm a big fan of this car, I really like the way it drives. It's a proper car that, you know, needs to be driven properly. It's not the kind of car you can probably a slouch in. Requires your attention, which is something I always appreciate in a car, to be honest. So happy when they put this in the uh, previous game. It's nice to see it make a return. It did astonish me that for a long time that we never had this in the Forza game. We always had the later GT40 in Forza games, which is a good car, but I much prefer this. Yeah, 
far behind. Something's clearly gone on back there. Maybe hit the uh, hit each other or rammed each other the road or something. But yeah, they are not able to keep up with this. It would be if we're uh, if we're crashing into a building there. It's not very nice. Big win there. It's going to take them a while to get to the finish line there. Let's see how long. Much more comfortable lead there than in the last race. There they are. Ooh. Very nearly, what, seven seconds there, near enough. Ahead of the 4 GT40, the later model. And then the Bronco was in third, the Focus was in fourth, and another Bronco in fifth giving us again the all important 20 points so uh, yeah let's see if we can make it three out of three in the third and final race right with the original GT40 giving us a uh, resounding win there I think we're going to go for something a little bit more modern and a little bit more European as well obviously the GT40 was collaborated with in part by uh, European companies but the Ford Focus RS is uh, yeah well the Ford Focus and the hot hatchback kind of thing in general is more of a European thing. So yeah, let's see what the Ford Focus RS can do. 350 horsepower, 350 pounds feet of torque, all wheel drive, not much in the way of weight at all, although it's significantly heavier than GT40, but it's also lighter than that Mustang in the first race. And yeah, got pretty good acceleration. Brakes could be a little bit better, granted, but on the whole a really rather solid hot hatchback. So let's see if it can uh, give us that third and final win. Obviously this is on the lower end of the class, so I'm not sure if we're going to be up against a wide variety of vehicles here. Yeah, we've got the Falcon. I think there's a Bronco behind, but it is mainly focused vehicles. Now, granted, we don't have the power of the Falcon. Pretty sure we have better handling. Especially with uh, the old wheel drive giving us plenty of grip. the drift as well. Come on, catch up. on it, come on, it's be a little bit less time. It's blue versus white focus, come on. Slingshot, you know, drafting and then going around. Oh, 
it's going to be a lot closer than last time. But we do get the win, just about. Easily in the closest race of the bunch there, I feel. See how close it was. Yeah, very, very little room for uh, error there between the top three. We were all less than point, well, just over point three of a second between each other, so that is very, very close. But yeah, unfortunately, being on the lower end of the class, the variety wasn't quite as good. Only a, uh, a couple of Falcons, an F-150 racing version, and a Ford Bronco, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah, but that's just the way it goes sometimes. But nonetheless, we get the 60 points. But more importantly, that is five points towards the festival playlist overall, meaning you get uh, closer to the Ferrari that we were driving at the beginning of this episode. But also, importantly, it means five points to the series overall, which is five points closer towards getting that SF90, which you need 80 points for. So, uh, yeah, well worth doing everything in this in the first couple of seasons just to get that SF90. But nonetheless, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.